Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we are going to be talking about a new topic from group 17 that is the disproportionation, the disproportionation of chlorine with sodium hydroxide. The first question should be what is disproportionation? So it's a reaction, it's a redox reaction basically, it's a redox reaction where same element, same element is both oxidized and reduced simultaneously. The same element is both oxidized and reduced simultaneously to make two different products to make two different products for example if you start with iron I'm just giving you a random example you start with iron for example and let's suppose iron has a charge of plus two here so for example if you receive two products which is Fe3 plus and you receive pure iron for example you started with aqueous iron 2 ions, you ended with aqueous iron 3 ions and solid iron. You can notice that from Fe2 plus to 3 plus you are losing one electron. So that is basically oxidation. But at the same time the Fe2 plus when it's becoming Fe0 which is pure iron, it is gaining two electrons. So basically that is reduction. That is a very quick example of disproportionation reaction. When we talk about chlorine, we need to be talking about how the system works with chlorine and sodium hydroxide. Now we'll be talking about the chlorine with sodium hydroxide using our definition of disproportionation. So chlorine with aqueous sodium hydroxide. There are two important scenarios here that we need to be talking about. For example, one is cold and dilute sodium hydroxide. So we have cold and dilute sodium hydroxide or we have concentrated hot sodium hydroxide. So we will start with the idea of cold dilute sodium hydroxide with chlorine. With chlorine gas. Imagine you start with chlorine gas and you add sodium hydroxide which is obviously aqueous here. You are going to get two different products here. The first one is going to be NaCl which is sodium chloride and the other is NaClO. Now NaClO is called something but I'm not telling you the name right now because that would help you with gassing the oxidation state. I don't want that right now. Chlorine starts with an oxidation number of zero but in sodium chloride sodium is plus one so basically chlorine is minus one so it's chloride. In NaOCl you can see Na is always plus one oxygen is always minus two. That means the chlorine atom in NaClO has an oxidation number of plus one. So your chlorine from a zero is changing to a number of minus one and to a number of plus one. Let's put arrows here to make things simpler for us. First the red arrow. So chlorine is changing from zero to minus one and that is gain of one electron. You can call it reduction. The oxidation number is decreasing here. At the same time you can notice that the oxidation number is changing for chlorine from a value of zero to a value of plus one. So let me put it here and now you can see lost one electron which basically means oxidation. So chlorine atom is changing from zero to Cl minus 1 that is the reduction idea and from Cl 0 to Cl plus 1 that is the oxidation idea. 
NaCl is called sodium chloride, so sodium chloride is minus 1 here, and NaClO has the ClO minus ion. We call it the chlorate 1 ion. You know why chlorate 1? Because the 1 means the oxidation number of chlorine here. This equation isn't balanced right now. So what we'll do is, so you add 2 before the NaOH, but still it's not balanced because the H and O's are here. So you will add one water molecule. Let me put it here. That is another product here. Your main concern is the idea that chlorine and NaCl and NaOCl, or you can see NaClO, has a ratio of 1 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. While sodium hydroxide has a ratio of 2 here. Why am I writing all these ratios? Because these will help us in molar calculations. Remember that. Now let's talk about the second scenario, which is a little trickier. It is hot concentrated sodium hydroxide with chlorine gas. I'll start with chlorine again and I will be using sodium hydroxide here. In this case I'm going to get, let, let, let's put the black arrow. I'm, I'm not being racist. I'm going to get NaCl like normally, NaClO3 and some amount of something else I'm not writing right now. If you notice the chlorine starts with a zero oxidation number. In NaCl, it has an oxidation number of minus one. While in NaClO3, Na is plus one, oxygen becomes minus six because there are three oxygens. So the total oxygen value is minus six. Chlorine has to be plus five. The ClO3 means chlorate five because chlorine has an oxidation number five here. So you can notice one important thing here. This chlorine is changing from zero to minus one. So that is again gain of one electron. We call it reduction. And at the same time, you can see chlorine is also changing from zero to a plus five value, which is loss of five electrons. That is oxidation we should be able to balance this equation because it's definitely not balanced right now. In order to balance it, we need to understand the idea of oxidation number change here. I am breaking this chlorine molecule into two portions. I'm writing it Cl, Cl to make things easier for us. This same chlorine molecule has been broken down into two Cl atoms because I can explain the idea of oxidation number changes better here. I have completed the equation, but the same chlorine has been broken down into two atoms and that should be okay. It's the same chlorine molecule, okay? Now, in order to balance these equations, I am breaking it into the half equations. When chlorine reacts with NaOH, the first half equation is you receive NaCl and that is first half equation. The second half equation is when chlorine reacts with NaOH, that would be the second half equation, you receive NaOCl, Na, NaClO3, NaClO3. This is the second half equation. Notice that in the first half equation, chlorine atom starts with a zero oxidation number, ends with a minus one oxidation number. So that is basically a change of oxidation number one unit. Notice another thing that in the second equation, chlorine starts with a zero oxidation number, goes to a five number of oxidation number, which is change of oxidation number is equals to five units. What we do in order to balance this equation is pick this one, which is the change of oxidation number for first half equation, give it as a mole ratio to the other equation. In a very similar way, pick this five, which is the change of oxidation number for second half equation, give it as a mole ratio to the first equation like 
factors. Now these are balanced. Notice one thing that when we move on, notice one thing that as we move on, when we do the totaling, we receive 6Cl. So instead of writing 6Cl, I'm writing 3Cl2. I can write 6NaOH as a combined of, as a combination of these both NaOHs. I receive 5NaCl, I receive 1NaClO3. What about any other product? Because we can see there are 6 H's here. So I can make 3 waters here. This is the balanced equation. Notice that the mole ratio for chlorine, NaOH, NaCl and NaClO3 is all very different here. We have 3 moles of chlorine being used with 6 moles of sodium hydroxide to receive 5 moles of sodium chloride and 1 mole of sodium chlorate 5. We call it sodium chlorate 5. Sodium chlorate 5 because 5 is the oxidation number of chlorine atoms here. This is how we solve these equations and this is the final equation after balancing.